Are you considering a switch to Linux and you're not sure if the time is quite right yet? Well, that's a really good question. And today I want to bring a couple of articles we've been saving up for a little bit, as well as a couple new ones that have just come out in the last couple days to illustrate that this might very well be the best time to start thinking about a switch to Linux. Thanks for checking out this video where we talk about switching to Linux and the basics of using Linux and other things around free and open source software and maintaining your privacy as best as possible on the internet. And today we want to talk a little bit about some of the things that Windows has been doing lately once again to push people towards utilizing Windows 11 and taking better full control of your computer rather than you having control over your computer. And that's the thing I like most about Linux is that I have the full control over my system. If I want to use X, I use X. If I want to use Wayland, I use Wayland. If I have no idea what that means, I just use whatever the Linux distribution gives me and it, chances are it's going to work for most things that I want to do but I might have some individual choices. Well, today I want to look at a couple of articles. Uh, this one was from uh, late March, and it was uh, uh, Microsoft is poking the users again for the Windows 11 upgrade. So if you're still on Windows 10 and you're like, I do not want to move to that abomination called Windows 11, you will probably have by now received a few more pokes and prods to move to Windows 11, of course, assuming that your computer is capable of making the switch. Obviously, they want everybody capable of making the switch to do that. And of course, if you don't, even in this really bad economy, they just want you to throw away your otherwise perfectly good working piece of hardware and buy a new one that has Windows 11 on it because they want full control and they really don't care about the planet or maintaining uh, stuff out of the garbage cans or things like that. And so what we're looking at here is uh, they're doing pushes once again. Now, again, not every single computer is going to be capable of running Windows 11. And so if you don't, you're going to get a notification down here that says the PC currently doesn't meet the minimum system requirements. Now, there are some things you might be able to do if you see this to maybe you need to enable TPM 2.0 in your BIOS or maybe there's some other thing that you might need to do in order to upgrade the computer to Windows 11, you might not want to do that. You might say, well, I like my Windows 10 computer how it is, and I just kind of like to keep it in that general format. Well, you don't have that choice after a while because they're just going to keep on getting more annoying and more annoying and more annoying. And of course, Windows 10 support is going to be completely over in about 18 months. So um, if you do want to keep your Windows 10 beyond 2025, you will end up paying $61 for device. So let's go ahead and run through this. You have a computer. It still works perfectly fine. You purchased the computer and paid a license for the software that runs the computer. But after an arbitrary cutoff time, they just don't want you using that system. So they're going to start charging you again to keep the system, despite you're not ready to upgrade your computer. So in the first year, it's going to cost $61, and then it is going to double every year for three years. The second year, you're going to pay $122, and the third year, $244. And I don't know if you're, they're going to continue supporting after that. Now, will you still be able to turn your computer on? Maybe? It is Windows after all. They're doing weird things and connecting to the system. It's not outside the possibility that they're going to shut the system off that you can't even turn it on. Uh, obviously, you'll still be able to turn it on and offline mode would work, but think of all of the video gamers right now who are concerned that a couple of days ago a few more video game servers were shut down and people who have purchased a game still have a copy of that game on a physical disc now cannot play play the game even in an offline mode because they've turned off a server. Well, is it possible they're going to do something like that? Enable some form of kill switch? Very possible. I'm not saying they're going to do that. But if you do want to keep using your computer in a secured state, you're going to be paying more money for it because they want everybody to switch to Windows 11. 
why it is much more deeper integrated into the cloud. They have far more control over it. They have far better ability to push your stu uh, their stuff, their plans onto you. And this is a serious problematic thing. Now, even if you're on Windows 11, they still don't want you to have control of your computer because this one just showed up. This is uh, just a couple of days ago, and I literally read the first one of these, which came out a couple of days after uh, after uh, April, and I was like, is this an April Fool's joke? And I had to read it a few different times and then look for it in more reputable places to make sure, oh, it is actually real. Apparently, Windows now stealthily added a driver and is now randomly turning it on that blocks you from making changes to your default web browser. And some security researchers looking into this can confirm it's there, but report that it suddenly showed up even without an update in between. So somehow Windows toggled something outside of an update schedule that would prevent you from making changes to your web browser. Now, you can still make changes to your web browser by going and going through the Windows settings and making those changes, but if you attempt to use it through any form of software or through manually modifying the Windows registry, it is going to block you from doing that, and this apparently is part of uh, KB5034763 or KB5034765. Uh, uh, those updates apparently are where this was rolled out, and then, but it does, wasn't automatically turned on. It just randomly turned itself on, so now you don't have any control. So just like Ubuntu trying to push deb packages out by pushing snaps, now Windows is starting to push systems, which is going to prevent you from manually changing the registry files for your own personal customization of your system. Which, by the way, this is not a home user thing. This happens on the Enterprise Editions as well. And so it's getting to the point where even if you have the full Enterprise Edition, you still don't have control over your system. That is a very good reason to start looking at switching to Linux. Because over here on Linux, we have the full control over our systems. We can even destroy our systems with our own stupidity if we want to. You might even look at that and say, well, I don't really want to destroy my own system and my own stupidity, uh, stupidity so maybe I'll just go ahead and keep using uh, Windows. Uh, please, please consider it. Even if you're not looking to make a switch to Linux on a full-time basis for everything, maybe there is a piece of software you still need to run on Windows, still consider looking at Linux for some things because you can use a USB drive and boot into a Linux and play around with it without modifying your computer. If you have a much bigger, beefier computer, you can install a uh, something like Virtual Drive on it, um, uh, any form of uh, virtualization uh, software packages, and you can run Linux on that. You can get a secondary hard drive, or hey, why don't you just, if somebody's like, oh, I have to buy Windows 11, and you can't convince them, say, I'll buy that old Windows 10 computer off your hands if you're just going to throw it away anyway, and just go ahead and install Linux on that guy. And that way you can have full control of your system. You can keep more computers out of the landfills that are otherwise perfectly fine and they will actually run better when you install Linux on them than when you install Windows on them for the most part. So if you are ready to switch yet, definitely have a look at our playlists. Now I have um, a couple other videos about this and I will have another video out very soon about making the switch to uh, Linux from a Windows 11 machine that is coming on down the pipeline soon. So stay tuned for that. And with that, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.